Hello and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 604. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is the 30th of January, 2023. Laura and I both use the she, her pronouns and we're recording separately because there's an ice storm. Yep. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense for Laura to put her life in danger uh, just to record a podcast. So... And even uh, if I had gotten over there on time, you got a work call for the last yeah. two hours. So I really Which would have been in danger. A bunch of old white men who don't let each other finish each other's sentences. Or yeah, they don't let people finish their sentences. And they go off on diatribes on all of this where then there's like an active problem. And it just makes me want to scream at them because I'm like, I don't even want to be here. <laughs> um I think that's understandable. So would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Um I guess I can go since I'm already I mean whatever. So I am working on putting heels and toes in some cranked tubes um, so that they will then become wearable socks for me. Um, I have not touched them since last week until about two minutes ago, but that counts. So this is the White Birch Fiber Arts. I cannot remember the colorway name. I want to say it's like some weird three letters. It starts with O, but I don't remember. Uh, So this is the first one. I'm using some old, um, I don't remember what this is, but I've used it in like six projects. (laughs) It just never seems to get smaller. Uh, so yeah, I'm just putting heels and ribbing and then I'll put in a toe afterward. You'll put Uh, in a heel? A heel afterward, which is still kind of a toe, but we're the heel toes. Yeah. And then the only other, like, thing I feel like I've got any actual progress to show on is the balloon top. So this is the thing I've been working on for a couple months, at least. Um... Really? I felt like you cast it on, I guess we are at the end of January. I thought you cast it on in December. Yeah, it was some point in December. I don't remember when. Actually, it might have been before that. But yeah, it's a a lightweight um, summer top. I'm knitting it out of uh, uh, Camellia Knits Flax Finger. Camilla Finger or Fiber Company. Fiber, yeah. Camellia Fiber Company. Sorry, the lighting is a little harsh right now. And I'm knitting Leslie's it sitting where I normally sit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the flax fingering. So it's an alpaca linen silk blend. And I finished binding off the bottom. I still Woo! got to finish the sleeves and do the eye cord around the neck. But um, I haven't actually tried it on, but it looks like it's going to fit perfectly fine. Did you see I did a little party emoji? <laughs> No. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> Very fancy. No, I don't know um, how to make it go away. <laughs> it's despite, just gonna continue. Despite me being on Zooms like several hours out of every day for work, I feel like Laura is actually far better versed in Zoom than I am. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it makes me laugh when I can um, but, do the little reactions. <laughs> So yeah, you can see how the front, the lace gets smaller and the stockinette comes around the bottom. I love and, it. Um, so I've got to do the sleeves and the uh, the neckline, which is good because it's a little too gaping. So I'm going to go down the needle size for the eye cord edging here. So it'll kind of pull it in a little. Oh, it's just eye cord. The, the edging here is just, it will just be eye cord. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And yeah. Um, I've still got most of a skein left. I just broke into the skein during the bind off. So I'll have plenty of yarn. Nice. I might make the sleeves a tad longer, but um, they're just sort of little cap sleeves. So I might add an inch maybe, but not not a lot. So So exciting. I can't wait to see how that wears. Um, Well, if it looks nice, I might wear it to Vegas uh, next month. We'll see um Vegas is currently getting snow so um (laughs) it may not be the right weather for it 
that's it. That's basically what I've uh, got to show for the week. So I hope cool. you can carry the rest of the uh, episode. Well, I've got, I picked up a project that's been hanging out for quite a while. I had started it back, um, oh, in December, because it's the Advent Socks. This is yarn from Mm -hmm. Woolens and Nosh, including that little contrast right there. So I was enjoying knitting this so much that I went further than I normally would knit. And so instead of doing a heel with a gusset from the toe up, I decided to do a short row heel. And I really wanted to do a garter stitch one. So I was poking around and realized that I had purchased the book Confident Knitting um, a couple of years ago, I think 2020 actually. And this heel was actually in that book. So it's worked over a little bit more than half the stitches. This is covered in pearl fur because she keeps laying on it. So it's been pearl approved. But yeah, I am just going to start knitting some more. Round and round and round until I'm ready to um, be done with the the top of the sock. The words are hard tonight. (laughs) The cuff. There we go. They are hard. And also like, so we don't we're in Mississippi. We're just south of Memphis, for those of you who might not know. And we don't get a lot of, like, we get tornadoes. We don't get snow and ice a Mm -hmm. whole ton. So um, I am a teacher in a middle school, and um, it is very exciting for everyone more than the adults. When there's potential weather. (laughs) When there's a potential weather, like, I was spelling the word snow like my children can't understand (laughs) letters today. Um, They can. Like you (laughs) do with young children or or animals who know the word outside. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Or treat. Yeah. Um, So, uh, but I I feel like the adults, like as we were leaving, we're like, I hope I don't see you for the rest of the week. (laughs) Um, We were very excited. So words are a little bit difficult today. Uh, I also will get a text message at 5 a.m. to let me know if we have school or not. Yeah. So I used to then text Leslie because she had a child. She has a child still, but he was in high school at one point and I'd be like, no school. But anyway, that that time has long passed. Yes, so I have pretty has. socks that I might get to work on tomorrow. If we get a snow day. I thought you and were spinning uh, flax tomorrow if you get a snow day. I, I am spinning flax tomorrow. I have my little humidifier. That is going to be next episode's um, big, big to-do. But hopefully I'm going to learn how to spin flax tomorrow. I've been reading about it in Ply Magazine. They had a flax issue. Um, You don't spin it the same direction as you spin wool. You spin it the opposite direction. Why? Um, Because that's the way it likes to twist. It like makes it more even and smooth. You have to add water, but not too much water. So it's recommended you spin it in the summer in high humidity. I don't have that right now. I mean, usually we've got that in abundance. I know. Um, So I bought a baby humidifier that has little reindeer oars and runs off a battery. Um, So yes, I'm very excited to play with flax tomorrow. 100% flax. I've spun flax blends before. And now I'm thinking I should have spun them reverse, but I didn't know. So next time I spin a flax blend. But we're going to talk about spinning a little bit later. I um, have been knitting on this pair of socks as well. This is Knit Spin Farms in her most recent and last little known holidays colorway. I got past the heel and I am also going to work up the cuff on this. This is the second sock. So I have this much left of the yarn. It's still in my holiday bag um, because I start I started this in January, but you know what else. Um, so yeah, two socks on the cuff, which is very exciting. 
and this one goes with me to work and gets knit on at work um like when I pretend that I'm taking a lunch break or I'm waiting in line at Starbucks in the morning oh I dropped off the Starbucks hats this morning they were super happy Mm -hmm. I was like it's going to be 25 degrees tomorrow I feel like you need something so um the last thing that I've been working on I feel like it has no progress but I did put in a marker so that I could see that it made progress is my weekender light sweater so this is knit on size three needles now that I'm past the ribbing and I am alternating skeins which is part of the reason why it's such a mess so I got yarn going everywhere hold on one second please also pearls enjoying laying on this and shoving it to the ground as well so this is a weekend or light when I actually wear it it will be reversed so although I'm kind of liking the sock in that side I haven't decided you can wear it both ways. Just depending on your mood. Well, I can't once you put in the sleeves. I mean, because the pickups. But they, yeah, yeah, but I'm an. Uh, um. So I put this little marker in at the beginning of the week, so I could see that I was actually making progress. So I have. I've done her in an inch and that's kind of my goal per week. So you all will be seeing it till the end of time. <laughs> um, but progress is progress. Yep. And it, it will get done. Um, so let's see, that was three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. I have like, I don't know, 13 more inches to go on the body. <laughs> So enjoy the next 13 weeks of this, um, at least. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, we've still got sleeves <laughs> and yoke. And the whole, like, yeah. this part. Uh, yeah, so that's it for me for um, knitting. I do have some spinning. Leslie spun at my house this weekend. I did. I uh, finished spinning, but not flying the um, Advent back kit from um, Knit Spin Farm. So I've still got to um, wind all the little bits into center pole balls and um, then ply everything together. So, um, but I have made some progress. You have. Uh, I don't have any spinning, but I do have um, a couple watercolors that I managed over the course of a week. It's not a lot and um, it's been a while, so I'm not like super thrilled with with either of them but again progress is better than no progress so yeah um the first one is like a grassy meadow with a lighthouse oh pretty it's giving me like Maine vibes or Michigan vibes the other is like a very similar color theme to some others but it's like a Ooh, pretty. kind of thing so um yeah I've done that and then Laura and I both did block printing. Do you have your? Yeah, I do actually. I put it at the end of the show notes. Good. Okay, so we'll do it then. Um, no, it doesn't. I mean, we can do it now. You've got yours right there. It doesn't matter. They'll, they'll stay right there. Okay. Um, I, I did try some more full bust adjustments um, over the course of the last week. Uh, felt a little bit like I was losing my mind because I... I did the same, same things in different orders and tried tweaks and everybody who left suggestions, thank you. Um, but there was a shoulder adjustment I had never even heard of before. Uh, but I decided, I've been a member of the Cash Moret, um Club. I don't remember what she calls it, but uh, it's sort of like a Patreon support, but it's just on her own site. Mm -hmm. And you get like a percentage off of patterns, plus you get a free pattern every month or two. And um, you get access to her master classes, which are like half hour, 45 minute um, videos where she does demos and lectures about a, one specific topic. And she had three different ones that were about like measuring, 
um, dart adjustments that you can make, and then dart refinements that you can make. So I watched all three of those and learned several things. But I think the most helpful thing that I learned was when you're doing, um, well, A, because I don't wear a typical bra with like underwire and like a lot of structure. I tend to wear like sports bra type bras. Um, my boobs are more like flat versus like they're more squished and wide versus out, right? Okay. And as a result, that affects the bus start. And so I kept trying to like move it back so that it wouldn't be, my problem was that it was too pointy, regardless of what I did, it was, it was too pointy. And it, so it was like a big bright light going, hey, boobs, you know. Um, so I, the, You should the, put in a big bright light that says, hey, boobs. <laughs> right there. Right there. Um, not if you want this up before the end of the month. Uh, so the tip that helped me the most and I had seen it somewhere else but sort of forgot about it until Cash Morant mentioned it is a a bus star is like a triangle here let me uh this was the one of the ones I don't remember if this was the one that actually worked or not but so a bus star is like a triangle And what you're doing is you're taking out that part of the fabric so that you can still have the fullness where you need it here at at the boob, but you take it out here at the side. It's kind of hard to do this and show. But that's essentially what it is. It's you're tucking fabric here, but you're leaving fabric here. And it's sort of difficult to do with a fabric that's like a, a cotton or a linen or whatever that's got like decent drape but it's not like a jersey knit that'll just go around wherever you stretch it and it's happy yeah so the tip that helped the most was that when you're sewing the dart together and difficult to see this there we go so when you're sewing the dart together and you start your sewing machine at the at the edge here and you're going towards the center When you get close to the center here, when you're like an inch and a half out, you need to start going to where you're parallel to the. um, Oh, interesting. So you sort of curve it a little bit. Uh huh. And that made such a difference. That one little thing of instead of it being at a point, you sort of curve it so that it lays flatter across the chest. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. We're closed tomorrow. Yay, you. I just got a text on my watch. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the the curving at the tip until your stitches are parallel with the edge of the fabric, and then you continue to sew off the edge of the fabric for a few stitches, so you have um, some extra thread to tie off. That really helped. I haven't actually knit, or not knit, I haven't actually sewn with real fabric. I've been using Swedish tracing paper because if I had been using real fabric and made the eight to 10 different um, bodice pieces, I would have gone through a lot of fabric. So, And it would have much... been very expensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, even using cheap fabric, it's like, you know, two thirds of a yard every time to do a full front bodice. So for me anyway. Uh, so yeah, that helps. So now I feel like I'm confident enough to not use like my main fabric, but like a cheap similar yeah, fabric like a muslin to, yeah to uh to try again uh but not today <laughs> so uh yeah that's my little bit of sewing talk hopefully that little dart tip helps someone else um but you have a bunch of spinning right i do mm-hmm. because i like to spin and not ply <laughs> and i would be happy to ply it all for you because i just enjoy the art of plying, like the the act of plying because it requires so little thought maybe tomorrow plying will also happen of some kind <laughs> um let's not get crazy now i feel like there <laughs> should be a prize for someone Ooh. who goes through through all of our old episodes and every time laura says maybe tomorrow or maybe maybe this tomorrow week, i'll do <laughs> x and then checks to see if they if she did that x <laughs> Um, you know, whatever. All right, I'm going to go in the order of the show notes for one. I'm harsh because... your mellow, and you're just you like, are. Moving on. <laughs> I'm like doing my little snow day dance. 
slash ice storm dance and you're trying to bring me down and it's not going to happen because I have tomorrow off of work. Will I have to make it up on President's Day instead in two weeks? Yes, I will. But that is a problem for tomorrow's Laura (laughs) Catherine Linneman. All right. So um, my friend Lois was so sweet and bought me some Ingle Nook. And I was thinking about buying a sweaters lot of this. And she got me six ounces to try. And I'm glad she did because I would not buy a sweaters lot of it. So it's going to be a super fun, bulky cowl. And I cannot wait to do it. She's so sweet. But this is from Ingle Nook. It was one of their Middle Earth blend series. And I tried spinning it a couple different ways. So it's 25% Shetland, 40% Merino, 25% Silk, both Tessa and Sari, and then 10% Tweed. So I was in my head kind of picturing like, um, oh, what is that? Like a bulky sweater that's got some texture. Um, I'll think of the name maybe. Anyway, this will, this is like, chaotic energy so I first tried spinning it from the fold and I was just getting lumps of sari silk like just full-on here's all the sari silk here's the rest of the fiber and sometimes you'll get that when um a blend's not super like when it's in strips Mm -hmm. and it's not like blended throughout um so that was a fail and I just decided to spin it end to end and what happened would happen and it's very pretty. Like, I love yeah. it. Like that gray and the light blue with the tweed and the sorry silk is very captivating. But it would be, even me, the person who's going to knit a sinister cat sweater with mm-hmm. rainbows um, and wears overalls whenever possible, uh, would find that a little bit much. So I have six ounces of this. I did... Um, three separate bobbins so it'll be a nice chunky I'm I'm kind of picturing like a big cowl that I can write now that I am um doing outside car duty everything is about how can I cover every inch of me this is like 30 degrees today when I was outside and did the middle schoolers who were wearing shorts and flip-flops want to get on their buses in 30 degree weather no they did not they wanted to hang out and talk so uh to each other, not to me. <laughs> I'm not that cool. Um, so getting them on buses is like, it's like you get to go home. Please go home. Why don't you <laughs> want to go to that happy Gilmore? Why won't you go to your home? So I have six ounces of that to fly and I'm excited to see how that comes out. I also finished the flax blend that I was spinning from hip strings. I totally went off script, but whatever. This is a walk in the heather. It is 75% merino, 12.5% flax, and 12.5% tessa silk. This was spun from the fold. It was a nice blend. Um, I feel like the heathery bits will show a little bit more. And also, I wanted to see with a flax blend, they can be real and silk. They can be really, really heavy and drapey. And I wanted to see if I could spin it woolen to add some air and loft. So we'll see how that turns out. Next time I'll spin it the opposite direction and see what happens too. Um, I finished all the fiber morsels from Wolfiend. So those are all done. Um, This is the second bobbin. The other bobbin's still in my recording bag, which is in the other room. So those will be applied. Those were just various little chunks and I spun that as a two ply and we'll just see what happens, how they match up. And then Second to last, but not least, I have some wee chickadee ephemeral, which is 100% Polworth. It's a one of a kind colorway. I think it'll come out. She does like moodies, like moody colors mm-hmm. so, so well. And I'm spinning that on a starling. And then the last thing that I've actually been working on as I've been sitting here, because one thing that's awesome about recording a part um is I get to spin <laughs> wheel and so on my other sterling I am spinning a sweaters lot of hello yarn it was a one-of-a-kind tester colorway that I bought years ago 12.5 ounces of a Cordale and I'm trying to spin this for a sideways sweater 
we'll see if I get enough yardage first and if I can get gauge, gauge with it. So the second half of this is on my wheel right now. I have this much left. Wow. About as much as my head. So yeah. I yeah, wonder yeah. how long it's going to be until you have a wheel specifically that lives right there in front right of where I'm sitting. No, in front oh, of where no, I'm no. sitting. I mean, I could do that. And I, I could move my sparrow from the kitchen table over there. I mean, you wouldn't get a lot of time on it. <laughs> <clears throat> That's true. I could I can move like the electric eel six over there. I mean yes you could <laughs> now you've given me ideas now i'm plotting mostly it's because i tend to leave stuff at laura's house and this is her way of turning the tables on me and yes like, leaving stuff at my house <laughs> although you were the one who just suggested it i did not bring it up <laughs> this is true but it is sort of my fault you have no one to blame but yourself my friend um so yeah, that's all the spinning. Maybe some plying will happen tomorrow. Wouldn't bet on it. But I do have a new uh, toy coming to, for winding off. So maybe, we'll see. We will see. Um, so that is it for me for spinning. What are you reading? Uh, I just started a new book last night. I'm like a chapter in, so I really can't tell you much about it, but it's called The House Witch by Delamock. It's all one word. Um, I, I think it's like a male female fantasy romance right now I can just tell you it's like fantasy like that's basically all I can tell you um, I'm still listening to you just need to lose weight and 19 other myths about fat people by Aubrey Gordon I'm really trying to like spread it out because I really enjoy I mean even though it's a, a depressing topic to to hear just how marginalized um fat people and disabled people and people of color are it's I enjoy hearing it from her and I retain it because I I don't know she just tells it in a way it's an important conversation yeah um and then actually after talking to Christine um I think it was on the fail along or maybe the BKN one of those two um, she mentioned the Throne of Glass series, and it reminded me that I've never finished it. I never finished, like, I stopped before the last book was out, so I never, like, read the last book. And while the first book and, and part of the second are a little annoying because she's very young in them, her character is, and, and it, that reflects, I say young, she's like 18, 20. Um, and that is very reflected in the character, and it's very annoying sometimes. Um, I did like the story a lot, so uh, I restarted Throne of Glass um, during my many, many failed uh, full bust adjustments. So that's what I'm listening to and reading. What about you? I um, have the same old, same old, like still reading, um, still listening to Hidden Legacy series, still watching Will Trent. I did get two picture books to review and I'm super stoked about them. Um, Penguin Random House sent these to us. Leslie's oh. never even seen them. Didn't know. Um, they came before Christmas, but they are picture books. So the first one is Knitting for Dogs by Laurel Mulk. And it is about a girl who is very good at lots of different things. But once she tries, she's excellent at scarves. She's excellent building tree houses. Um, but she tries to knit a sweater. And she is definitely not successful. And she turns that failure into a success. But my favorite page in the book is when she is explaining to her dog, and the pictures are, the illustrations are adorable, mm -hmm. that um, failure is part of the creative process. We just aren't used to it. Mm -hmm. And I love that. That very, res that very much resonated with me. Um, and so... And at one point, she also tells Max that sometimes it's just best to start over again. So if you are looking for a super cute book that includes dogs and some upcycling, as well as knitting, you might want to check out Knitting for Dogs. And then the book that I'm super excited about, I like this one, but this one is amazing. 
<laughs> so this is me and the boss a story about mending and love it was written by michelle edwards and illustrated i believe by april harrison if you are not in the book industry, you might not know that the American Library Association announced their big awards for the day, for the year. So things like the Newberry, the Caldecott, um, the Stonewall Award, and the, Critic, the Coretta Scott King Award are just some of them. And this book won a Coretta Scott King honor. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, I know that book. We have that book. So that is very, very awesome. It won the Credit Scott King honor for illustrator, illustrator. And it is about a young boy and his older sister, who is a bit bossy. I was the bossy older sister. That's shocking. <laughs> you were not, though. I was the middle you the, child. You were the middle child. Um, and one of the rules is that he has to go everywhere that his sister goes she's the boss and they end up going to the library and the librarian teaches them sewing and embroidery oh cool and at first he's not like she's super successful and he's not but he doesn't give up and not only does he do embroidery, but that night he wakes up in the middle of the night, he finishes his embroidery. And then, and it's all about taking your time too and love. Not only does he finish his embroidery, but he mends his pocket that has a hole in it. No. And he also mends his sister's rabbit. Or it's an elephant, I think. Hold on. Bear. What what are animals? The bear's ear was falling off. And so he fixes it for her. So it also goes into like how mending can be an act of love. Yeah. And it's just gorgeous and sweet. And it's lovely to see representation in handcrafts as well as in picture books. Yeah, it's beautifully illustrated. Absolutely gorgeous. And I was so happy that it won the um Curtis Scott King honor so congratulations April Harrison and Michelle Edwards that's so exciting but yeah gorgeous book highly recommend especially if you're in a household that mends or sews or crafts at all or have a bossy older sibling like me <laughs> um but yeah two great books the um, knitting for dogs does have a simple scarf recipe at that like end um, pattern recipe. And then me and the boss has like how to do your own embroidery that he does, the little smiley face that he makes and how you can make that. So really, really cute and gorgeous. So thank you Penguin Random House for sending those yeah. our way. They'll live at Laura's house. I'm, I won't be allowed to check. Actually, out. I think I'm going to donate them to my library if you're okay with that. Yeah, because um, my Beta Club members, so Beta Club is an organization for kids who not only get good grades, but they also have to, to do a certain amount of community service hours every um, semester. Mm -hmm. And they are going to the elementary school to read picture books. Um, in March and I would love for them to take especially me and the boss okay. so I think I will donate them to the library so that they can be enjoyed versus just sitting in my house um because I always need more picture books at my work and it's a great way of teaching also short elements like theme and yeah analyzing pictures and all sorts of stuff picture books are not just for itty bitty kids I'm they can be for big kids off. and adults too i know <laughs> leslie's like off the soapbox well not not because i don't enjoy talking about it but because i have food on the way and yes i'm a hungry hungry hippo um so we did do a sale along 
um, which will be up on Patreon at some point this week, um, as soon as I get time to get it uploaded. Um, but we did gel plate printing uh, this week, which uh, is you take a jelly plate, you can buy them. They're called Jelly, G-E-L-L-I, it's a brand. Um, but they're basically like, it's mono printing with a, a flexible kind of squishy plate. Do you want to show you? It yours? also like kind of catches. It's hard to like spread the ink. Like it catches in places. Does yeah, it's a little sense? bit like sticky. It um, doesn't blend like you would if it was like a flat, smooth, mm -hmm. non-sticky surface. It's got a texture to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I did two. So sure. I cut out um, pieces of paper and put down the ink and then put down the pieces of paper. And this one also has string and then printed on top. So that is what I did. I also wanna say our Patreon, um, you can support us. It's linked on our website, which is also where the show notes are, mm -hmm. which is the knit girls with three L's.com. Yep. We do two events a month. Yep, we do a fail along, which is where we try something new. And then we also do a BKN, which is just like a chat. It's just a chance for everybody to catch up. Yep. And both are super fun. We also do, um, oh, I was thinking of a good, uh, like for our fail along, I got the sock mending little loom from Katrinkles. Mm -hmm. And I thought using the sock mending looms might be fun because I've not done that before. I have, but I would totally be willing to just let you do it. And heck also, I have ones. like uh, five pairs of socks to mend. So that's all you. I'm not doing that for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my jelly printing, I did a lot of negative space stuff like Laura. So just use some string and a couple different colors. But like Laura said, you can see sort of the blobs of color when you're rolling things out. They it doesn't always blend super well. Um, you're supposed to be able to use images from like a newspaper or magazine as well. I didn't really spend a lot of time researching how to do it. So like the one that I did came out kind of washed out, but interesting anyway. I guess mostly this stuff is used for like collage work, um, which makes sense. Uh, just another random one with color and string. And then I did a couple of cutouts. Oh, you should have used the string for the balloon um, strings or did you? I did yeah oh. but it was so thick like I, yeah. it was only I only brought one weight and of course there's none at Laura's house nope um I just didn't none to be up. had and then this is my favorite one I like your no I think you should get that framed and put it up behind you um so yeah jelly printing was fun um it was a little messy but it was fun. I thought it was an interesting thing. And now I have tried mono printing. So there you go. Definitely something I could, I would do again, probably not with a jelly plate, but like with a flat, you know. I liked um, when we did the stamp carving. Yeah, you really did like that one. I did not enjoy that one as much, but um, I know that was one that you liked a lot. But um, I think that's basically it. Yep. Uh, everything. I mean, we've got some links um, in our favorite things. I know Laura's a huge, Julia Marino Stan, you know. Always. And Maggie yeah. Casey. I took a yeah. class with Maggie Casey this past week. You did. Yep. It was wonderful. It was hand carding. Um, and I I I like both of them as well. I just don't do a lot of like social interacting, um, with the exception of SSK. <laughs> that's basically it. So if I get to see you there, that's awesome. And I'm excited and I have a great time, but that's probably the only place you're going to see me. <laughs> Laura does a lot more travel than I do to events. Yep, she enjoys I'll it be more, at Fly so. Away and Maryland Sheep and Wall. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. I'm going to go cool. delicious. Enjoy Chipotle. your food. Yeah. And um, we will talk to you next week, hopefully from the same room. Bye y'all. Bye y'all.